Hi guys, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, uh, this guy here, which basically is uh, important for some application in both analog and power electronics. I will show you how to use it, but first uh, let me explain what these pins are. So EFM is uh, the frequency modulation and uh, you can vary this pin between 0 and 1, so basically by putting a, a voltage generator V connected to here and to ground. This can vary between 0 and 1. So when you put uh, uh, the EFM to 0, you're gonna have a value called space. And when you put it to 1, I don't know how you can reach here, maybe with a, even with a sign, with a straight line, uh, with an exponential, I don't care. But when you arrive at, uh, at 1, when you arrive at 1, you're gonna have the mark value instead. So you, you put mark equal to uh, 1 kilohertz and space equal to 10 hertz. So you're gonna have a, a Q which is the sine wave which is varying between 10, 10, 10 hertz and 1 kilohertz. How it is varying it is decided by the FM input. I will show how in a moment. For what regards instead the EM it is the block for the EM modulation. It, it is the pin for the EM modulation. Let's suppose that uh, EFM is kept to 1, and uh, which is equal to 1 kHz. And uh, in the block of EM, you put a sine wave of 50 Hz. The result is going to be a first sine wave of 50 Hz. And inside of this sine wave, you're gonna have uh, the um, principal wave, which is uh, um, which is your sine wave at one kilohertz of frequency, and it will be something like this. Don't mind my drawing, but it will be something like this. So let me open uh, another draft in Let's Spice, and uh, I will show you how this block works, and then I, I will show you an application of Soft Start. So. Um, Let's put EFM with a voltage generator, uh, voltage generator which is uh, equal to, um, to zero, and this is equal to zero as well. Let me put the mark between uh, 10 kilohertz and the space uh, and the and the space of uh, 10 hertz. Uh, let, me, let me run the simulation for just uh, one milli and we should see nothing <laughs> because one milli is uh, um, is too low so let me put uh, uh, the milli Uh, I think that one ten hundred as uh, is a little too low. Um, let me check because I want uh, I really want to show you it to you. Uh, okay, it doesn't. Oh, sorry, it doesn't make any sense. Um, ah, sorry. Yes, it is. It is zero. So um, you can't see nothing because, of course, I'm not varying the modulation. Uh, so now let's check the the, the the frequency of this sign, and the frequency of this will be one kilohertz because here it is zero. If I put one, let me return to one milli, please, because we don't need it. If we turn to one milli and put one, you can see that instead the, the frequency here is uh, uh, 10 kilohertz, as, it's, as it is shown here. Let me close this for now and let's focus only on this guy instead. Uh, so now let me put a pulse as between 0 and 1 and a rise time of one milli. The other I don't care. Now you see that the frequency is varying, but let me reduce the space so that you can see this in... A, uh, no, sorry, the opposite. So uh, let me put space equal to 
1 kilohertz and let me put the mark it on 100 kilohertz and the transient of uh, uh, 2 milli you should see that the frequency is increasing okay so um, let me put the, the ramp to 2 milli and you should see okay so now you can see that the frequency is uh, starting from mark to, from space and is going to mark so if i check the the frequency here it should be around uh, uh, the mark frequency which is the 100 kilohertz and let me check this and it is true 98 kilohertz if i check the frequency here well it is uh, quite hard it is quite hard to check it because uh, the frequency is increasing i do not expect exactly one kilohertz but something very near to one kilohertz uh, 13 kilohertz yes because the frequency is already increasing so it is normal so as you can see this is uh, um, the frequency modulation now let me let me keep uh, let me keep uh, EFM constant uh, to one. So I will uh, uh, sorry let, let me put to zero, and let me put uh, as I am the a uh, same wave a uh, uh, same wave of zero one and fifty hertz. So now you should see the. Um, Sorry, let me increase the, the frequency a bit. Let me put 100 Hz. Uh, no, let me put 1 kHz. Uh, no, let me put, uh, yes, 1 kHz, but here I, I should increase it to 10 kHz, so, so you can't see it. Okay, so th this is the, uh, the, the amplitude which we, my sign will be varying. And now you can see exactly what I draw it here. So you're gonna have uh, the the amplitude which is varying according to the sine wave that I decided in the EM block. So if I put two kilohertz, you see that uh, it is increasing. So that it, the, this re, this strange repetition is increasing. And if I put uh, five volt as an amplitude, you're gonna see that the the sine wave here, the, the the output Q is following exactly the EM modulation that they decided. You can even do both of things, so you can do both, ampli both EM and FM modulation with uh, a frequency of 1 kilohertz. Uh, let me put a bigger transient, 10 milli, and uh, let me put this as... Uh, oh, let, me, let me keep this. Uh, no, actually let me, let me decrease it to, one, to 100 hertz. So as you can see, the frequency is kept constant inside. And if I zoom, you can find that it is true because I'm not modulating the frequency. And as you can see, the frequency is around 10 kilohertz. But if I do also modulate the frequency, so let me put 100 milli. If I do modulate also the frequency, well, I can show you that uh, you can do both of things. Between 0 and 1, a rise time of uh, 100 milli. 20 milli should be enough. Let me put 20 milli as well. Uh, view and request... No, 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 oh, no, 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 so, as you can see, inside this block here, the frequency at the, at, at, at the, um, at the edge is uh, higher than the frequency at the start, because I'm varying the frequency according to this straight line here. Now, you can't see it well because I put uh, 5, but if I put 1 here, you should see very well what is, what is going on. So here the frequency is obviously higher because the, 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 the because it is increasing according to the EFM block, but you should see very well here. So this is how you can use it basically. So this is how you can use basically this guy. And now I will show you an, an application of this for the soft start application. You know that in power electronics, whenever you have a, for instance, boost converter or even a back converter, let me draw a back converter now. At the start of the circuit, 
you're gonna have a very high current because this capacitor here is discharged but also this capacitor here is discharged and so you're gonna have a very big current and then an assessment of the inductor current and this current here is called inrush current to protect the inrush current you can do a soft start which is basically which is basically generating a duty cycle make like this etc 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 until you reach the desired duty cycle so small peaks in in this small square wave you're gonna you're gonna um, give uh, um, some peaks of current which in a short period of time like for instance uh, 100 nano they won't damage so much the circuit this is the idea behind the soft start to realize this in 80 spice you can use the EM block as before. The, the idea is you put an FM with a ramp between 100 kHz and 50 kHz, for instance. Then you use a Schmidt trigger. And then you can use. So here you have a sign. Here you have a square wave, and then you can use an, an RC block here to generate a triangular waveform, which is increasing in time, like this. And then you can compare this square waveform with the starting, the starting waveform here. So you're gonna have something like this to compare. Sorry, something like this. And the, and the result will be like something like this. So there will be a certain interval you can in, in which you can have a small uh, square waves, like small duty cycle square wave, like impulse, and then the decided duty cycle. So I can close this block. And I, I can show you this instead. So here you have basically the mark between 100 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz is the same if, if you invert it, it does, it does, it does not matter. So uh, let me, uh, let me show you uh, block by block what is, what is going on. Can, what the, f whoa, what is going on? Thank you. So let me put uh, uh, this was better. So here I, I have uh, the bearing as which so the, the ramp. Then I have the sine wave as uh, ah sorry you can't see it. So here here you have the the sine wave. Then uh, uh, at the output of the same uh, after the the sine wave. You're gonna have the the square wave here. After this, I generated a triangular waveform, and I compare it and I compare it with the starting ramp, and at the end of the day, I obtained the the start duty cycle. And this is in the, during the the steady state operation. But if you watch the if you watch the transient. You see that here I, I, I have a triangular square wave, which is increasing in time. And the duty cycle, it starts with few peaks and then it increases. So this is the idea behind a soft start. Um, we, can, we can do, a, uh, we can use... Uh, um, we can do in in a very very fast way a, a back converter to show you that the you're gonna still have the rush current but it's gonna be reduced 
So this is the eyesight MOS. Ah, uh, sorry, you're gonna you're gonna need uh, um, to do this. Uh, you're gonna need uh, 15 volts here, but also the MPN PMP stage. So I think that I will use the boost converter instead because uh, you know it is a low side, so it is uh, preferable. PMP stage. I'm, I'm going to use this stage here because uh, I need a lot of current in order to drive my my MOSFET. So 15 volts here. This is the follower emitter stage, by the way. And this is the minus 50 volts. And this is the boost converter with an induct with 50 volts. Let me put 20 volts. The inductor 4.7 micro. The capacitor of 10 micro. The MOSFET here. The diode here. And the capacitor of 100 micro. And a load of 1. So yeah, that's, that should act as a boost converter with soft start. I needed to add another plot pane. So let me check is if this is if this guy is working. So you still have the, the uh, so you still have as you can if you check the diode if you check the diode voltage you still have the inrush current. But I can assure you that uh, it is reduced in comparison with the what you should you should actually have. It is still reduced. Let me increase this guy a bit. Let me decrease this. And let me put also an ESR of 100 milli to make the simulation more feasible. Let me put a real shot key diode and let me run again the simulation. So across the diode you're gonna still have the, the rush current, but as I said before, it is still reduced in comparison to what you should actually have. Ah, sorry, the... Um, so this is the duty cycle of the MOSFET. The green one is the duty cycle of the MOSFET, and for some reason the soft start <laughs> is doing uh, something different, but at the end it is working. So I have... Uh, ...40 volts, more or less. And uh, I think that we can, we can end this video, because I think that I showed you enough. Uh, in the next video, maybe I will uh, try to design a PLL and uh, show you how it, it, it can be done. Thank you guys for your attention and see you in the next video.